Two, one. Howdy. Uh, thanks for checking out my channel. Um, I'm about to make you a side imaging sonar expert. Uh, it's not that hard. Uh, you're going to walk away from this if you watch it, and you're going to you're going to learn so much uh, that it, it isn't even funny. Uh, you're going to you're going to take this, and you're going to catch more fish and you're going to enjoy that equipment that's been sitting on your boat that you've been wondering how exactly do I use this to catch more fish. Um, one thing I want to point out, one, uh, I get a lot of feedback guys are like, yeah, the companies that manufacture this equipment, they don't, they don't explain exactly what it is or how to use it. Well, I'm about to fix that for you. Today we're going to go over uh, Billings Lake in Connecticut. This is one of my favorite lakes. I've taken a lot of tracks I'll explain that here in a minute, up and down this lake, side to side, taking a lot of data, and we're going to take that data and that information that I've gathered, and we're going to make you an expert in that uh, silly little unit that's sitting on your boat. So who am I? My name's Jacob. I live in Connecticut. I love to fish for bass. Uh, this doesn't necessarily apply to bass if you're a cat fisherman. If you like to uh, fish out in deep sea, all that. This all applies to you if you plan on using uh, side imaging. So uh, this is what I'm going to go over today. I'm going to go over uh, what it is, uh, how it can be used, speeds, turning, how to take a good track, and exactly what a track is. And what we're looking at, that'll be towards the end. Yeah, trust me, I, I know everybody wants to know what am I looking at. They want to know that right from the get-go, but, but you need to know what's going on prior to that. Um, and lastly, how do you catch fish with all this information? Well, uh, we're going to we're gonna get to work here, and uh, I'm going to show you how I do it. So right here, I have a picture on Google Earth Excuse me, of um, Billings Lake in Connecticut. Uh, I'm going to take the side imaging data I've gathered and kind of show you a little bit of what I have of the lake. First I'm going to put an overlay on. Uh, I use the data and some of the sonar um, programs I have and I made a depth map and we can come in and we can see the deepest spot of the lake right here, 30 feet. I can come in and I can look at these islands right here. I can see exactly what's going on. Uh, how the points of the islands come off. I can come over here. I can find steep drop-offs. I can come out to this middle island in the middle of the lake and I can see where the structure is. Uh, structure. Rocks. Right? Yeah, you've, you're probably fishing for bass if you're watching this, but um, in this area you have this island here. Not much going on on this side of the house, a pretty steep drop off. I see a lot of guys fishing here. I see I'm not catching much. I can come out here, I can anchor, I can throw some lines, and I'm going to catch a fish right here because, well, they like structure. Coming to the rest of the lake, uh, more information I've gathered on how it works. A little bit about this lake um, it's a natural lake. It was raised 10 feet by a dam that was placed here. The boat launch is here. Uh, it's got a few creek channels that run within. There, if, come down here, I can see this lake here. Uh, it's more of a puddle. But it feeds into this lake. And it feeds in right here. And there's a creek channels. And you'll see this whenever I bring up the rest of the data. That run around this island in the middle. To the left and to the right through these two islands, or three, around this one and around this one. And it's all something that's uh, operated in the past. You know, there's not much flow through there right now because the lake's so much deeper. So I'm going to take uh, this data here and take it off the screen and bring up a contour map that's a little bit different than what you're probably used to seeing. This is a shaded relief. So I've taken my side scan imaging data 
and I made a shaded relief of my favorite lake to fish. So, you know, I have a printed out copy of this on my boat, and I take it, and I can look at these. I can look at the island. I can see where the depth is, where the shallowness is, and I can apply that to my fishing. Go ahead and take that off the screen. I'm going to bring up some tracks here. Just notice that bright orange is it? No orange, bright orange, no orange, bright orange. Anyways, <clears throat> now we're looking underneath the water. We're looking at the structure on the bottom of the lake. Uh, I know what you're thinking. Like, there's empty spots of the lake. Well, I have covered the entire lake. Uh, that's not a problem. These are the straightest tracks I've taken. That's something we're going to get into later. Um, so, not only... Uh, the side scan allow me to identify a structure as I'm going, but I can record that data. If you have a unit that is side side uh, side scan capable, uh, it can probably record. Uh, do not buy one that does not come with an SD card, and because you never know what you're going to do in the future. Uh, these things last quite a while, and the technology is not like it's not changing every other day. Uh, it's not like cell phones where in a year it's going to be outdated. It's going to last for a while if you buy one. So taking this data and right now we're looking underneath the water. So like I said earlier this uh, creek channel that runs through here, the main feed. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit. Here is an island. Make the island reappear. See here? And let's look underneath the island. Boom. So no data here. It's dark, but I can look underneath and I can see where the structure is. These bright, the brightness you see here is the structure, the rocks, the rock outcrops, the rock runs that are left underneath there that have been there for a while and the bass like to feed on them. I brought this up earlier. I said, you know, guys like to fish on this side of the island. And, they, and I don't know why they pick that side, but they don't catch anything. And I come over here, and you can get some decent fish over here. And I, you know, there's some there's some blockbusters down there, because um, that's where the bait is. Uh, we're not going to dwell on this this bit too much longer. We're going to get into some actual side imaging. One thing you can do with it is uh, got another form of uh, shaded relief, shaded contour map. Uh, I can you can take this data right here. Uh, this one isn't complete. I have some completed files and another USB uh, card, and I I could not find it for the life of me. I could have made this lake much prettier, but you can see where I'm completely lacking data. Uh, but we'll go over here where I'm not. I can see a very nice gradual change in these areas, and I can take this data, this data that your side imaging allows you to gather, and I can make a very nice map that you can upload into your unit. If your unit can uh, record, it can probably take these hummingbirds, Lawrence, they can take these styles maps and, and as you're sitting on the boat you can see your actual position, what you're doing and where you're at on these uh, contour maps. So there's not much uh, not much else here to show you. Um, I'm going to bring up uh, This Reef Master software. This is what I like to use. Uh, it's not cheap, but it allows me to um, take that uh, data that I've gathered and turn it into some really, really neat projects. So uh, you'll see here I have <clears throat> an overlay that I've created out of some of the uh, data I've gathered. Uh, here's that center island that we talked about it earlier. As I zoom in, I can come up here and I can look at individual large rocks under the water, even small rocks, and I can see structure that I understand that bass might want to be on. A lot of guys, they like fishing really close to the island, and yeah, you're going to catch a lot of junior bass, a lot of junior fish out here, but a hundred yards north I've got some really deep, large structure, and my side imaging has allowed me to find it, discover it, and exploit it. 
we're going to go and uh, bring up a 3D view. It may take a second to load, who knows. So here's a, another function within this system. A very, very detailed contour map. Um, I come down to the south end of the lake here. I haven't ran my boat through here because it's one feet. It's one foot. One to one to three feet throughout here. There's no point in me bothering with it. In this area over here, I come through, I take some tracks, gather data, put it all together. Now I can come back into my data. And this is this is where side imaging gets really interesting. Is uh, your computer, you know, the way the the way the the data is gathered is it, it knows depth, it knows the distance it was from the transducer, and it can turn it into some really really interesting features. And here we go. Check this out. Boom. Let's go ahead and uh, make that a little bit more. There we go. Now I can look at my lake the lake I like to fish the most in a whole new fashion. I've, I've identified structure in areas that well no one else knows it's there. Um, one in particular is right through here if you can see my mouse. It's an old part where the creek used to flow through and it cut real deep between these two. This was probably one, sil one solid island at one point and it cut real deep. Now me as a bass fisherman, I know that well they're going to be up here feeding along this ridge line, and there's deep water for them to run to. Deep, and it runs all the way down to 30 feet. Uh, don't let these numbers fool you. The scale's a little off on this. This is a uh, eight would actually be 30 if I scaled it back down, but uh, you can get a little crazy with it if you want and kind of really get a deep deep look at what's going on in your favorite lake and where you might find fish that you well you never knew they were there um, this is one of the things I like to do and it's made me a better fisherman um, I don't go after crazy 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 amounts of fish I, I go for the larger ones so if you know where the larger ones are at there's a better chance of you catching them so let's get quit fooling around with this. I'm going to bring up a I'm going to bring up a uh, just a random data file. Uh, let's try 6.1 and see what that is. <clears throat> bring that up and we'll watch some uh, side imaging that we're about to get into the details of as we talk about exactly what it is. In the bottom right quarter you have the same feed of side imaging that you're gonna get on your unit as you're driving around in your boat some of the newer units have the ability to make a map as you go on the left side of my screen I have the completed track that I taken that I've taken here on the lake so what is side imaging well it looks left and right so you got your port and starboard sides of your boat it looks out right now I have mine looking out 120 feet both sides um, it doesn't look directly below you although it can pick up objects directly below you so if you look here in the middle you'll notice there's dark lines here in the middle and that's uh, called your water column that's directly below the boat that's what I'm not receiving uh, where you see that first bright line, I can go ahead and rewind it a little bit and pause it right about there. So right here to my left and to my right, that's the water column. First bright return right here is my first return. So that's where the sonar is going out. It finally hits something and it comes back. The computer decodes it and boom, first return. Things about your first return here. The deeper you are, the further out your first return is going to be. The more shallow you are, the closer to you the first return is going to be. Now, see this line here? It's my first return. You'll notice as it's coming up, 
it gets closer to the boat. That's because the water is getting shallower. And you can see it up here. Ugh, I hate how that taskbar comes down. Nine feet. If I rewind it a bit, 28 feet. So we'll watch uh, 28 feet turn into nine feet. And it's uh, upper left corner that you can see the depth. This is one of the uh, first things you need to learn. Uh, your unit's not malfunctioning. That's just how it works. The deeper the water you in, you're in, the wider the water column's going to be. So depth is 25, 24, 22, 19, 17, 15, 14, 11, and then eventually to 9. So let's pause it here now. Um, that's a good way to identify a ridge line. You're not going to be able to necessarily make a map while you're out on the lake, but I can look at this image and I can see here's a line of shallow water, here's my big deep water, you know, here's where the drop off occurs. I might be able to come through here and pick off some pretty large fish if I'm willing to uh, take the time and the correct baits in that area to fish. This will pay off if you take the time to find those areas and we'll get in more of what you're seeing on the screen here in a minute so we've gone over uh, the water column uh, next we'll kinda go over speed I'm not gonna mess with the image as we're going through here I just want to kinda talk about speed for a second the faster you go the less returns you're gonna gather off your unit um, Imagine if you're, I don't know, if you're, <coughs> it's shooting sound out the side of the boat. Boom, 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 at a set pace. Boom, 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 boom. If you go faster, the less likely you are to catch that return and the more spaced out they are between each other. So with my particular unit, between 2 knots and 2.5, if you look in the upper left corner, I'm going 2.2 knots the more likely I am to get a decent return. Now what I would look at the screen and what's going on here, that well that's not a fantastic return, but it was during it was during the time of the year that well there's a lot of vegetation. Vegetation is going to mess up your return a bit. Uh, don't worry about that because we're looking for structure. You can see the structure through the vegetation. Um, if you go too slow, well you're going to be wasting your time the uh, technology has ability to go a certain speed if you go too fast well you're wasting fuel and you're wasting your time so pick a speed that you get a decent return at you could probably search online for your unit and find a good speed and maintain it now we're coming into a turn we will go ahead and pause this I'm turning to the left. You'll notice how my data looks misconstrued throughout and it looks misconstrued through here. And I have a better, much better um, demonstration of that. Is it uh, 2-0? Yes I do, right here. Look in the upper left corner you can see the overall picture I'm taking. If I look down here at my live feed, it, it doesn't look necessarily bad. Now, remember, this is there's a lot of weeds in this area, so I'm not going to get a super detailed picture of the bottom. And honestly, if you're fishing at a shallow, weedy lake, turn your sonar off. There's no point in using it, and the bass can kind of... Well, they can sense it, and if there's one that's been hooked while sonar's going off, he might remember it. That is uh, one of the things that's been proven is bass remember what hurts them and probably other fish. So uh, you can see the overall picture up here on the left is all sorts of blurry and twisted. So if you're turning to the right and you're taking a side imaging picture, the right side is going to be compressed and the left side is going to be stretched and vice versa. So you want to avoid turning it all all cost. You know, you may see uh, these demo units that they have out at the store, and 
they're doing their thing and they're like, yeah, look, we're just turning to the right. I got this perfect picture. Don't buy that. That's all BS. You need to run straight, straight lines. So we'll watch this and I'll speed it up. And so right now we're going through the the feed stopped. Did it? It did. That program crashes so much. I like the program, but man, does it. Oh, that's the wrong one. It crashes way too much. So we'll go through 20, and then I'll, sh I'll show you 61. So uh, 20, a lot of blurriness, right? And I'm going to work through the blurriness, and I'm going to kind of get us to a straight point where I start driving the boat straight. Now, I remember this. The reason I was turning so much is there was people on uh, paddle boards, and they are well, I had to turn around them because I was not going to go at paddleboard speed. Uh, still only going 2.3 knots. So I kind of straighten the boat out as I'm coming through here. Uh, still on a slight turn, but I'm maintaining a heading for the most part. And my picture starts to improve. So we'll go ahead and zoom down, and I'll show you something neat real quick. Straighten out the boat. I get a different style picture. And right here, on the uh, bottom right corner where the mouse is, I can identify two large rocks that are 35 feet away from my right side. And they may be structure where bass is hiding. And then I get back into the nastiness. Uh, now, let's take the same area and watch it with a much better what I tell you I really like this program but man um, the other reef master one doesn't do that uh, anyways same thing straight line for the most part and we'll watch this and see where we go so now I'm going the opposite direction and we're coming up on one of the old creek channels and we're gonna watch our water column get wider and we're gonna see structure on the bottom as we approach it there's still a lot of weeds in this area but I'm not necessarily worried about them I'm looking for uh, key points like drop-offs uh, ability uh, for the fish to run Right, your bass are going to like that area where they can run and get deeper, especially if they can run towards structure. Water column's getting wider. I see a change in bottom tide. Go over that real quick. If you look where my cursor is, I have a brighter, brighter return. Uh, this is kind of weedy, rocky area, right? So the sonar is shooting through the weeds, it's hitting the rocks, it's giving me a brighter return. Down here it's more sandy. Sonar is going to get absorbed a little bit more, I'm going to get a darker return. Uh, there's all sorts of different palettes, including inverse. So pick a palette that you like, like I can change, I can change this one real quick to blue. Which is probably easier for someone who's starting off to read. Uh, um, rocky weeds getting down to more of a, I wouldn't necessarily call it sand, but a gravel bottom. We'll keep going. We're coming up on something really neat to the to the left side. 50 feet from the boat, a nice large rock structure. And we'll pause it. Another large rock structure. And I'm going to show you something really interesting here. You see how I have this right where the cursor is. I'm going to move it. You can see right above the cursor I have a bright return on my side imaging and then now right above the cursor I have a dark return now that dark return isn't actually a return it's a lack of return so that means as my sonar shooting out of the left side of the boat it hits this rock and it doesn't hit the ground again until here so that means that rock is tall enough that it blocks the sonar so now, 
I have a lack of return. So this tells me that the rock that's currently above my uh, cursor, and I look at, I, look, I can kind of go down to the bottom here, and I can see that's 40 feet away from the boat, and it doesn't really get a good return until 50 feet. It may be three or four feet tall. That's a very large rock underwater. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, I'm going to back to the same area. I'm going to uh, change this color back to that blue color. <clears throat> so there's our rock. Um, it's shadow, which is a lack of return. And then when the return starts. And as we're coming up here on the left side, you see this brightness here. So I got a hard return here. And I look up here on my map, and there's an island. So as you're driving down, you're driving your boat down the water. Look for physical structures sticking out of the water. Right here, I have an island that I can see here. I'm going to go ahead and spin this around. See this island right here? That's the one we're talking about. So there's that drop off, right? as you see my cursor going down that's that drop off before we saw the rock here's that island that we're talking about on our left and there's not really much going on over here so let's go back here you gotta be I really like it but man does it crash too much So, that island we just talked about, here on the left side, you see it coming into view. And it's not necessarily the island itself, but it's a drop-off that's raising up into rocks. Here on the right side, we can see the end of the creek channel, where there's a rise of harder rocks that didn't get eroded by the creek when it was there. So you got to kind of use your imagination as you're looking through this. You know, you're, you're looking through your data as you're going... And you can tell, you know, that, that looks like an old stream. Well, it probably is an old stream. You know, well, that looks like an old tree. It probably is. And so now we're coming back into shallower water. You can see the creek going off to the right. And there's not really much going on. We're going to see a couple rocks coming up on the right that we picked up through the weeds. Uh, the depth has gone back up to 12 feet. And we'll probably get a little bit shallower, but not much. So, let's go ahead and uh, leave this bit. And now we'll go ahead and get into uh, a little bit neater stuff. So, <clears throat> kind of already touched on this, but we're going to talk about how to take a good track if you're going to record your sonar. Uh, you want to drive as straight as possible, you grab a heading. Um, I don't know the heading here, uh, let's say 273. Um, maintain your heading. Uh, don't deviate. If you can stay on within one or two degrees, you're going to get a good image. Uh, it doesn't matter if it slightly curves. That doesn't matter. Uh, you can pick, uh, one of the things I like doing is from my starting point, I pick and area on the other end of the lake that I can visibly see like a house and I maintain my heading pointing straight towards that house which is exactly what I did here so I'll go ahead and start a track I'm driving towards the house right here on the right side I can see deeper water I can see this island here and underneath me I'm going to pause this underneath me what's going on here I see the water column getting shallower and then deeper. I look at my standard sonar here and I see a rise in the bottom. I put two and two together, there's rocks here. There's rocks that go out. How do I know these are rocks? Well, I can see a shadow, I can see a bright issue or a bright return here, and they touch each other. If they don't touch each other, it's probably floating in the water. We'll get into that 
uh, at a later date. Right now we're just talking about uh, rocks and uh, structures. Things can float in the water and you can see them uh, very easily in your side imaging, but we're not going over that today. Anyways, so I see bright returns all throughout here and little dark shadows right behind them. So that, that's telling me there's some rocks down there and they're not small. Uh, they may look small on your screen, but you start looking at the fact I'm looking out 120 feet to the left and the right and take that into account um, they're pretty big rocks so we're gonna keep driving we're gonna <sighs> again we're not even gonna edit, edit those out there's no point in it um, it's like you pause it and it goes bonkers on you so we're gonna keep driving Go back to blue here. I, li I like blue, you know, I like it, but on the left I'll keep it the orange so you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. So, as you see, right here is deep, right here is deep, and so as I'm going through, I can see that deep channel here and uh, raised portion underwater. Uh, very hard, very, you no, know, you know, I, I say this a lot and I really haven't touched on it yet, but the brightness. Uh, the brighter it is, the harder the surface. So um, you have a really bright, bright return. It's it's probably a solid rock. Um, so now we're getting into more of a sandy, muddy bottom. I look off to my right side. I can see some little bright blips down there, kind of little white fogginess around it. Uh, not much going on. Uh, there's definitely some rocks or maybe some trash that somebody threw out at one point um, there's an engine block on this lake I, I can't remember where it's at but it's down there float, or <laughs> floating it's down there somewhere um, so we're gonna keep driving and we're about to hit another island and we're gonna watch the island as we're going over and kinda uh, kinda take the time to try to interpret what's going on and then I'm gonna let you know Remember, focus on your water column. Focus to the left and the right, the brightness and the darkness. As I come up on brightness, I kind of expect my water column to get smaller. Will that happen? I don't know. It is happening. So what did, what was that to you? You know, uh, could have been a number of things. But let's talk about what it really is. As we're going over, I have my water column. I have these bright returns here. I have the darkness here. And we've kind of already, we've been driving around on this lake for a bit, so we understand that this darkness is, it's really just kind of sandy bottom. And this is rocks. And I look here. And I can see in my especially if I bring up because this has uh, Google Maps built into it so I can see this island in the lake and here is has as the island goes down in depth towards the bottom so what what you're seeing here is the actual bottom the very very deep portion of that island as we go so what does that tell me you know uh, well there's a uh, there's structure down there and you know you may drive right over that and you go straight up to this island look where my mouse cursor is and you're fishing that bank and you're fishing it hard you may catch a couple one or two pounders but you can come down here and you can find uh, some bigger fish that shy away from those areas it's one of those things you see those tournament fishermen man they're all about it I gotta get on the bank gotta get on the bank well, that's all fine and dandy if that's what you want to do but uh, I, like I said earlier, I don't go for the bank. I'm going for the bigger fish. So right now, we're about to come up on a rock on our left side. The water's getting slightly shallower. And I'm about to show you where the fish are. And this is going to blow your mind. If you're still watching, you're going to be like, what? And I'm going to be like, yeah, right? So anyways... 
Looking on my left side here, I have the tip of the island running along my mouse cursor, and that's probably uh, 15 feet right here before it breaks down. And then, right here, I have a bright return. Not much of a shadow, uh, actually zero shadow, so it's really just kind of a hard spot on the lake with some small rocks on it. And this is the part where we talk about, you know, how do I catch fish and using this data. Well, check this out. If this was me, uh, and, and this is exactly what I would do, as I saw this, as I was driving over, I would kick over a marker buoy on my left side. I'd drop it down, and then I would fish this rock right here. Why would you fish this rock? Look at my water column. So we talked about the water column a lot, and I said earlier that sometimes it'll pick up objects. It'll pick them up if they're suspended. So I see these bright blips. That's the air bladder from fish. And if I look over here to the left, and, and you may not believe me, but this is this is how this actually works. I see these bright I see these bright things here on the on the right side. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. We're gonna get back into that. Cause I'm about to blow your mind. Blue. Man, I was really into that. I wonder. Check this out. So now we're back. You see these bright areas here? I look to the left and I see these small dark spots in my sonar return. That's the lack of return from whatever's floating in the water here. And it's not small. Uh, these shadows are about a foot across. So, uh, these are fish. Uh, they're sitting off the top of this rock. And possibly over a rock that I'm right uh, currently straight over. So, uh, how do you know they're fish? Well, I'm not seeing a lot of other things in the water column. If I was seeing hundreds of blips in the water column, I would say a tree fell over and leaves are breaking off the tree and I'm getting returned through there. But these particular returns are isolated to this rock. So they're fish. Uh, I will go back there and I will fish it. And this is the first time I've seen this rock uh, reviewing the data. So I'll take the GPS location and I'm going to put it in my unit and I'll move Fit, oh, you gotta be kidding me! I'll move 50 feet to the right, and I'll cast and I'll catch them. So we're done with that one. Let's go to 50. Now, here is a long track I took of the lake, and we should be able to see that same rock again. Let's see if we can't find it. I may have drove right over it. So here we are. If I had to guess, I'd say it was right here. I can see some ish. I can see some uh, some blips in the water column there that I'm not seeing other places. Um, as I'm coming, I'm driving the boat further down, as the water starts to uh, get shallower, you'll notice I'll get some more blips in this area in the water column. Who knows what they are? Uh, and then we end up in some uh, shallow water with weeds. So it's 7 feet. I'm driving a little bit fast. It's 3.4 knots. Not necessarily getting good imaging. Um, so what you saw here is uh, nothing crazy. If you watch my other video, uh, it's going to go more over on identifying things like trees. Um, what we talked about tonight or today was uh, bottom structure and what the rocks look like underneath. Uh, here's a neat one. Look at this. Uh, to the right side here, about 65 feet, 70 feet from the boat is a really sharp, very sharp 
rock that comes off. There's an island here, and it doesn't show up on Google Maps. I, and this is the one that doesn't, and I, I wish it did. Um, but it, it extends out here, and it drops down. Uh, I've fished this area. I took a buddy out here the other day, and you know what? If you're still watching this, he's the guy on the cover photo and this is where he caught him and I told him I'm gonna take you out here right at sunset and you're gonna throw a crawdad artificial crawdad and you're gonna work it slow and you're gonna catch a decent bass and why am I gonna catch a decent bass here well I have structure which is these uh this extension of this island that's underwater and I have an ability for the fish to run to deeper water. Now, you catch a big bass, what do they do? They're always going to go for deeper water. Um, so I took them here, and we caught fish. And, wow, you know, that looks nice. So, you know, we'll kind of go back to what we had here earlier and kind of doing a, a quick overview. So that rock I pointed, over, uh, pointed out earlier, uh, you can see it here right where my cursor is on my Google Maps overlay. Uh, there it is. That's a better picture of it. Uh, so, you, you know, you have your structure on the bottom of the lake. Uh, this was, what, uh, 24 feet of water? And you would have never known that there may be some big bass lurking down there, but now you do because you drove over. And you can see my water column here as I'm driving over, and I took a picture of this structure on the bottom of the lake that nobody else knows about. So now you've taken your sonar data and you're going over these areas, especially this island. I can see these rocks here. I identify fish. I find them. Uh, you don't have to find fish on your side imaging. You're, I wouldn't say you're going to always find fish on your side imaging. Uh, what I showed you earlier is kind of a fluke. Um, normally they hug the rocks really tight. Those may have been crappie that we were looking at. Uh, if I'm serious bass fishing, I'm look, not looking for arches, I'm not looking for uh, things in the water column, I'm looking for items like what, what you can see here. So I, you know, I'm looking for rocks, I'm looking for a drop off with vegetation and then it goes down to some kind of structure that they can hide in whenever they feel threatened or afraid. And I'll come and I'll fish this and I'll, I'll pull out some monsters out of here. It's not necessarily a gigantic lake, but uh, it'll get it done. So we've gone over, um, you know, what it is, what it can be done, or what you, what it can be used for, uh, speeds, turning, uh, taking a good track, maintaining your heading, uh, what exactly you're looking at on the bottom. Not a crazy amount of structure, but you saw the rocks, you saw the shadows. Uh, it is what it probably looks like. If you see something that looks like a tree, well, it's a, it's a tree. You see an old car? It's, it's an old car. And believe me, you, you tool around long enough, you're going to find that stuff. Um, gone over, you know, how to identify fish that are in the water column and how to identify um, where the fish are going to be. And I've rambled on about that a lot. Uh, my software has crashed like, like 18 times. And this is probably 35, I don't know, who knows how long it is. It's way longer than I plan on it being. But, uh, you know, take what you learned here and go out on the lake and catch some big fish. Um, don't worry too much about the advanced features on your unit. Uh, I'm going to make a uh, much smaller video on frequencies and all that and how it all affects you because that's not really too big of an issue. Um, we'll go into gain and things like that. But anyways, uh, just use your standard settings and go out and catch some fish. Man, look at that. I can tell you. We talked about logs earlier. We'll zoom in. I'll show you where... I'll show you where a log is underwater. Look at this. You see that bright return right there? You see that shadow? You see the space between them. That means that whatever that is is floating above that area because between the two, as my sonar was shooting out, it gathered data between the two. So because the shadow is not touching the bright return, there's a log probably uh, uh, half of it sunk in the sand but there's a log sticking out of the water and well there it is you know you can go back and uh, go back and use that imaging and that data and 
man, you can make some really cool maps with this stuff. Uh, anyways, if you have any questions, hit me up. I doubt you're still watching, but if, if you are, uh, thanks for checking this out. And uh, have a good evening.